Welcome to our channel. We are getting ready for our next road trip. And that means we've got some jobs to do. Starting off with some upgrades that don't go quite so well. But this has turned out to be a nightmare. Fixing some stuff from our last trips. Oh my good God. And upgrading so we've got some new fancy things in the bus. Hope you enjoy. So our door in general is maybe a bit worse for wear. So this one is pickled and needs to be repainted. But the main thing that bothers us is the fact that when we're driving along, there's quite a big gap, so it's quite noisy. It's not all that secure. So the first thing that we bought is, it's like a barn door lock. So we're gonna hope to use this in the bus when we're inside of, side of it. Uh, as a basically an extra a bit of extra peace of mind to keep the door secure from being open from the outside but also when we're driving along to keep the door nice and secure slides it opens both sides what I'm hoping to be able to do is fit it to the door to provide an extra extra brace essentially and it's just secures with some screws, but we're going to secure it by actually bonding it to the door as well. So I just need to decide where I'm going to put this for the best uh, bang for my buck. And after a little bit of to and fro in, I realized I needed a filler plate behind. So I bought some six mil aluminium, cut it down, and I actually bonded it to the back, but not before cleaning it down with some U-pole degreaser because it was grubby. Then I added some CT1 on the back and jobs are good in. All right, so what I've managed to do is I fit the door lock on here. It's been bonded on as well with CT1. So I've done that first because I wanted it to be bonded on there. Now to make sure I got a really, really good bond, what I did was strip off the paint underneath as well as the paint on the bottom of the door because that was looking really untidy. Um, and then I bonded it on there and then added it in, added in the, six screws that came with it and then by the time that ct one's gone off that would be enough to hold it on there anyway hopefully forever but with the screws in there definitely so what i've done now is i've masked up added a bit of foil to the window didn't tell kelly um i'm just going to dust it down with some etch primer and then we're going to try some new paint that i found and this is largely how it works I do add a bit of rubber around it later to stop it jiggling around, but it's now nice and secure. In a moment of what might turn out to be madness or genius, I bought eight wheels that are in very, very, very sad state of repair. Thinking that I would strip them, put new tires on and replace my wheels on the bus meaning that we don't have the bus off the road for any time and that sort of stuff. However, getting it done has been difficult. Thankfully, the hero Luke is on his way. I'm just gonna wheel the tires out around the front. Oh gosh, I moved them all around the front. That's hard work. Um, so we could send an eight off. Lots of the tires are on here first glance they look brand new some of them have still got their original uh, like green strip around them they've literally never been used however that one is from 2005 so it is too old and some of them are just pretty well worn so we're best off really swapping they're all different load ratings they're all different tread patterns um, which is no good I want them all the same load ratings on all the same size the ones on the van themselves they're all um more than legal and they'll be fine i think for a while but none of them are um have the triple peak rating so all season rating that's needed for some parts of europe we also want to put a spare wheel on our very rusty back doors now that the wheel's gone off the loop for blasting um i'm gonna fit a wheel holder to the back door so this has been made by a very talented chap called roy at rtl metalworks you might be thinking why am i fitting it to these absolutely bogging rusty doors well the plan was going to be to get these um 
fixed and welded up before we went away. Fact of the matter is I don't have time. So, and we want a spare wheel when we go away. So they will be being fixed up when we're back. But for now, we need to get a spare wheel. So we've got one to carry with us. I'm just gonna give it a quick clean down. You can see like the salt from our last trip has got in all around the seals and, and just giving it a good rusty look. That wasn't there before we went away. This is the nuts and bolts of it. So I've had mine built, so the spare wheel will come at the bottom of the door because I thought that I was going to be keeping the windows, but it should work out well because actually I'm going to be wanting to mount bikes up here eventually off the other door. So you've got the structure here that's going to hold the wheel and then it makes use of the two holes on either of the hinges here to hold it in place. So it comes with a bracket to do that. And then what I need to do is mark up on here where the holes are going to come through from behind the door into this because you've got two bolt holes through there too. So what I'm going to do is draw around it, make a template on the back with some more tape and then tape it on here, corresponding around and I'll know where I need to drill through the door. God, the biggest R6 so far was getting the door card off, but it's off. Drill through now. Yeah, these are going to need some fixing. This that door is actually much better than the other one. There's nothing left at the bottom of the other door. But yeah, got some good storage ideas ready for this space. Love a bit of storage. Like a glove. Right, okay, so this should be good. What we're going to do now is take this back, give a little area of rub with emery board and just paint that area up. So it doesn't rust. Okay, just don't mind my gnarly palette. Obviously, we do a lot of, uh, lot of crazy projects and the palettes uh, are great workbenches. What I'm going to do here, so this is the face that goes against the door. And obviously, there's a hole in the door. Um, eventually I'll seal that up with some Sikaflex, but because we're going to be taking this back off again in the future, what I'm going to actually do is make a gasket out of this closed cell foam. So what I'm going to do is stick it on here and then trim it off with a knife. I should say, I previously, when I bought this, it came in bare metal and I painted this in uh, etch primer, high build primer, and then U-Pole Raptor, so this should be pretty hard wearing now. It should be. Okay, all being well, this will now line up. But, oh, good catch, Richard. Jesus Christ. Right, let's try it again. Right, so that's going to fall off now, so we should be able to try and line those up. All right, ready for a wheel. That looks good. Yeah, I think once the um, doors have been welded up when we get back, I'll probably bond this on here as well. Belt braces and all of that, but for now the bolts will hold it in nice, because that's how it's been designed. Um, so let's check out how Luke's getting on with our wheels. Hi there, it's Luke from Allen Automotive. Some of you may recognise me because I'm the poor soul who had to weld Richard's bus up. Was, well, a few years ago now actually. Uh, it was amazing to see how it's come on. So the main part of my business is actually shop blasting. So uh, we got Richard's wheels here. As you can see, looking pretty manky. So, uh, Got eight of these to do. So the plan is to get these all blasted up and uh, get them off to the powder coaters and make them look pretty again. That's how they turn out. So in the blast booth and they've come up pretty well. So please excuse all the railings, uh, therefore another job. 
Yeah, the backs are a bit pitted, but to be honest with you, you don't see any of that. But yeah, they look like new. So these have been blasted with iron silicate, what is a waste product for making steel. So it's a very, very fine media. What brings them up in this lovely finish that's ready for powder coating. So uh, yeah, off to the powder coaters. All right, so they're back. They look really nice. Um, there are a few pits in them, but they're really old wheels. So that's good, they're back. But of course, there's something that isn't quite right here. So now that I can see the serial numbers, I've got two different types of wheel here, and it looks like it's not worked out in my favor at all, this, and there's a lot to learn here. So, we basically have ones that start with 668 and ones that start with 669. For mine, a Vario, I need the 669s. I've only got three of them here um, that are new, which means I've got, quick maths, five that for, to me are absolutely uh, useless. I can't use them because the offset's slightly different. So in my defense, before they were blasted, I couldn't tell, I couldn't see the serial numbers. Visually, you couldn't see that the offset was different, but when you look at them now, you can. You can see that the lips on these things are ever so slightly higher on the ones with the 668s. Um, and I think that's going to mean I can't use them. Yeah, it's less than ideal. Um, and what I'm gonna have to do is take these down to the garage, get some changed over, I'm gonna make do and mend with the inner wheel, so use two of the existing ones on here, not bother getting them uh, powder coated, but just get a couple fixed up so we can have a, basically a matching set. But we'll overcome, it's just not worth worrying about. You know, the guy that sold it to us, I don't know if he knew, um, I didn't notice. There's, you know, I'd just like to think in the world, there's bigger things to worry about. Yeah, it's going to cost me a bit of extra money, but I should be able to recoup it by selling the wheels, especially now they're powder coated. Well, I am here at ATS. So I spoke to the, the gents the other week. Well, we've got our wires crossed, so he thought he would put it on bare wheels. And uh, although this is a class seven center, they can't change the wheels for me. They can't take them off the vehicle. So I'm just trying to find somewhere that can do that. But this is turned out to be a nightmare. Um, well, not a nightmare bit dramatic but just not ideal the timeline of this video is all out of whack but essentially ATS couldn't do it or wouldn't do it so I'm at a different garage on a different day with a different set of tires and we're hoping that these guys can do it they usually see me absolutely right and then I'll explain to you what's happened with the wheels <laughs> excellent effort to be fair from the lad here been here for about two hours um, and we've got a good set of tyres on now and they look like this fabulous from this side stunning new wheels this side got one good front one however the back is a bit mad max but we'll get that sorted when we get back inside we've got the two wheels to take home three good tyres to put aside or sell on so all's well that ends well, sort of. So we've got new tyres all round. Yes, this looks a bit gnarly. I'm going to throw a cover over it. Um, and it, this came off of the vehicle, so we know it's a good wheel. And we've got all of the other ones sorted. Going to retalk these, obviously, after 30 miles, uh, just to check that all is right and tight. And then I've got a couple left to powder coat later on. Next job. On our last mini adventure, we got a little bit of condensation on the windows. And in the morning, while drying it down, I accidentally removed the frost tint on our bathroom window. So I had to strip this with paint stripper. We found a really neat product on Amazon that basically goes on a lot like window tint. Spray it on, apply it, and this is the end result. Another thing that we noticed on our last trip in particular is that the water pressure wasn't as great as it could have been. So I've got under and I've seen that there's actually a good kink coming out of the pipe. So I've replaced the outlet 
with an angled one and I'm gonna actually go through now and change and clean all of the filters as well. So in our bus, we've got a pre-filter. I'm just gonna to check to see how much quad's in there. It shouldn't be anything because we've actually got one of these that we use to filter all the water before it goes into the bus, like a pre-filter. Um, and we're gonna change that too for a new one today and the filter under the sink as well, um, just before the next season. I might chop that filter open pre-filter see if there's any crud in there because i am interested to see whether it's been a worthy purchase or not right oh my good god that is disgusting what on earth jesus and i guess that's why you have a pre-filter that's absolutely shocking i've just washed it out in the sink so there's no more debris in there put that back in i mean that's going to help flow so you obviously you have one of these to stop any of that crud going into your pump because it would pretty much mash it up quite quickly i am shocked though because we only put clean water in the tank and what on earth was all that crap right let's get the screw back in go change the one inside so I've just cut the top off of my old pre-filter. And it looks disgusting to be honest. I'm just gonna pull, pull the gizzards out of it. Just to see how bad it is. But at first glance, I would say use a pre-filter. Well actually, but you, you can see by the time that the water's passed through the activated charcoal that fills the canister comes out the other end. The, the sort of sponge filter at the other end is much cleaner, as you'd expect. It's not yellow and or brown. It's still sponge coloured. So, I think it's worth doing it. So anyway, we've bought another one, and we'll just keep this in the van. But it does seem to be keeping some of the crud out of the uh, tank. And I can confirm that this little service did increase the water pressure. So happy days. Now, one of the things that I haven't done, I just want to get around to trying to make something, is a cup holder. So I've started to make a cardboard template that's going to slot in to my engine cover. So I've just been using an old Amazon box, cutting it up, and I've made it so it will fit in here nicely. Um, I'm going to try and transfer that to a larger piece of plywood to get the two sides right and then we'll figure out how we're going to get the bit in the middle because essentially i want it to slide in here have two cup holders in it um, and still have accessible to the tray underneath as well okay it's a new day i've actually going to cut the top of it now and i'm going to make that out of 15 mil birch now my garage is a disgrace but one thing that it does have is lots of off cuts of plywood that i can use so I'm going to find a suitable bit and then we'll use that to make the bit that our uh, coffee cups are going to sit in. Okay, so lots of back and forth to get this angle right. But I've made a template now that's going to make the uh, supporting bits that go underneath. So I'm just going to transfer that to some thick plywood and make these up. But they fit under like this. Okay, so horizontally, it's pretty pretty tough. Well, I don't think it's gonna go anywhere, but any movement this way, I think it's gonna fall out. So what I'm gonna do is get some fittings to go from here to here and here to here. But we'll tidy this up, get the edges all routed off. So I'm not gonna scag myself on it. Get some of them in the post and I'll show you the finished article.
Okay, so actually what I've ended up going for is these little latches that I've used everywhere around the bus actually. It's nice and solid now. Got two cup holders, so I'm actually gonna use one for my phone. I'm gonna put a piece of wood across here eventually, but because we wanna get on the road, got access in here, nice and solid. Good to go. So there we have it. We have fixed things up, we've upgraded, we're ready to get on the road. Hope you can join us for our next adventure where we're going to be heading across to Europe. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care.